EWTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The act of consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, I consecrate myself to your most Sacred Heart. Take possession of my whole being. Transform me into yourself. Make my hands your hands, my feet your feet my heart your heart let me see with your eyes listen with your ears speak with your lips love with your heart understand with your mind serve with your will and be dedicated with my whole being make me your other self most sacred heart of jesus send me your holy spirit 
to teach me to love you and to live through you, with you, in you, and for you. Come, Holy Spirit, make my body your temple. Come and abide with me forever. Give me the deepest love for the Sacred Heart of Jesus in order to serve Him with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Take possession of my intellect, understanding, and will, my memory and imagination. O Holy Spirit of love, give me the fullness of your sevenfold gifts, fruits, and beatitudes. Most Holy Trinity, make my soul your sanctuary. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray constantly, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophesying, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you wholly and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Verbum Domini. <clears throat> It is easy to rejoice always when everything goes well with us, but not so if they are not. How can we rejoice always when there is no job available for us to earn some income? How can we rejoice when there is constant arguments with our spouse or with some members of our family? How can we rejoice when we have been diagnosed with terminal illness or perhaps being in prison when we can't go anywhere? These are difficult circumstances that one may be in. But the call of St. Paul in, the, in this midpoint of Advent is not to rejoice because our circumstances are well and good, but to rejoice because the Lord is near. His time of coming is closer than before. More Advent candles are lit to signify the light of Christ becoming brighter and brighter and brighter as His coming is closer. We are to rejoice in the Lord always, not rejoicing in our good and stable circumstances, not in our job, not in others, because they always fall short in providing true joy and happiness to us. With the Lord, it is truly possible to rejoice in Him even in the midst of our difficult circumstances. The young Italian uh, blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, 
He was uh, suffering uh, tremendously from his uh, fatal illness. And someone asked him whether he's cheerful. And so he responded, how could I not be so long as my trust in God gives me strength? We should always be cheerful. Sadness should be banished from all Christian souls. Suffering is a far different thing from sadness, which is the worst disease of all. And he said, sadness is almost always caused by lack of faith. Blessed Pierre Giorgio pointed out one uh, of the impediments to joy is lack of faith. And this is really why after Paul said to rejoice always, he immediately said, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, even thanks for the hardship of life. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. One needs faith. One, one exercises his faith when he prays. One exercises his faith when he gives thanks to God in all circumstances. So lack of faith is an impediment to joy, and exercising our faith is a source of joy. Another impediment to joy is sin in general, and sin against charity in particular. The Catechism uh, lists those specific sins against charity that are considered as impediments to joy. They are sin of indifference, sin of ingratitude, of lukewarmness, sin of exadia or spiritual laziness or hatred that comes from pride. You know, if we cultivate these things, surely we will drain out our joy quickly. But if we do the opposite, like constant practice of charity toward others, then no matter how small, no matter how insignificant it seems to us, then our acts of love may, be, uh, may become our source of joy because one of the fruits of charity is joy. These are just a few impediments that we want to guard against, uh, to guard ourselves against during this uh, Advent, and few sources we want to look into in order to enable us to live joyfully our faith. Ultimately, it is the Lord who is uh, the source of our joy because all impediments to joy leads us away from Christ, and all sources of joy leads us closer uh, to Christ. Again, it is truly possible to be joyful uh, in the Lord, even if we're in the worst situation possible. Just a final illustration I wanted to give you is uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe. He's one of the greatest uh, well, I don't know about the greatest, but one of the great Franciscan saints, uh, you know, he's the one who suffered a brutal uh, persecution at the hands of the Nazis. And so it was during this time when he wrote a letter, and this is what he said. If you only knew how happy I am, this is in the midst of being in the uh, concentration camp, if you only knew how happy I am, my heart is full of that peace and joy which can be experienced even here on earth. Yes, in spite of the anxieties and worries of each day, at the bottom of my heart is always a peace and joy I cannot describe. The saints make the gospel real and tangible. They too encourage us with St. Paul, rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Don't lose hope in God's goodness. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, 
Give thanks to God because this is His will in Christ Jesus. You have given them bread from heaven. And we will sing this with the Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood Help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom 
where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of her Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.